have never been for the death penalty. I was never particularly against it either. It didn't, in fact, affect me. It seemed remote. It did not intersect my life in any way. But that changed eight years ago. I need to back up a step and say that Presbyterians as a whole, our General Assembly has for more than 50 years taken a stand against the death penalty. But we have to understand, or I want you all to understand, that doesn't mean that all Presbyterians are against the death penalty because our General Assembly speaks to the church, not for it. So it's very possible to be a Presbyterian and at the same time favor the, favor the death penalty or just simply be neutral about it as I was. Part of my responsibility as General Presbyter is to be a pastor to all of the pastors in the Presbytery. When I started as General Presbyter, I visited most of the 200 plus ministers in our area and all 105 churches, and that's when I met Carol Pickett. Carol served for 15 years as a chaplain on, the death, on death row in Huntsville, and during that time walked with 95 prisoners to their death. Carol was a staunch advocate for the death penalty when he began his time as a chaplain, an attitude generated largely by the Carrasco prison siege in Huntsville, which resulted in the death of two of the members of the church that Carol served. During our conversation and our visit, and in, his, in reading his book subsequently, I realized that death row, the death penalty, was now very personal. Suddenly a man for whom I was spiritually responsible opened the inner turmoil caused by his ministry on death row. He saw how the prisoners changed in the 18, 8 to 14 years they waited on death row. In essence, society was executing a different person than the one that had been convicted. He saw the heartache of the victim's family, not only for the crime, but after the penalty had been exacted for the lack of closure that they had expected. Carol told me that he was struck by the comments of the victim's family after the execution. In most instances, it did not bring the kind of closure they were seeking, and many left feeling empty, saddened by yet another death in the midst of their lives. Carol saw the toll taken on the hundreds of prison employees who had contact with death row inmates over the years of their waiting for execution. Everyone from kitchen workers to the death row guards were impacted by the relentless march of justice. He saw inmates executed whom he was convinced were not guilty. My afternoon with Carol had an enormous impact on me and my attitude toward the death penalty because I saw one other impact that perhaps Carol himself did not see. And that was the moral upheaval in the life of a man called by God to minister to those society had judged to be better off dead than alive. So what do I now believe about the death penalty? The death penalty is wrong, as Harvey said, for biblical standards alone. There are inmates on death row who I believe are not guilty of the crime for which they have been convicted. I believe that we should not ask employees of the justice system to be accomplices to the taking of another person's life. I believe it is the role of the church and religious leaders to call society to a higher standard of behavior, not to be guilty of the very crime those in the justice system are charged with. And I believe that it is the role of civil society to be civil. 
Our laws are designed to protect, in part, to protect us from the basest behaviors of human beings. We dare not yield to the basest of desires to take another person's life as a society, lest we become that which we most fear, those who disregard the sanctity of human life. So the question that I leave with you and with myself is, when an execution happens, who is it who dies? All of us. Amen.